right, Richard Lang, thank you for being on and welcome to Dream Talking. Well, thank you for inviting me, Nick. And Mike there, is it? This yes. is Mike, yes. There's hello, Mike here. as well. Yes, so uh, hello. Hello. I, I'm on, I, part of this show is I, I, the last thing I want to do is play it cool. <laughs> I, I'm starstruck, man. You, you've, you've been, uh, you and Douglas have been such a huge influence in my life. Like, there's not a day that goes by, probably not even an hour that goes by that I don't look for my head. Well, I'm very glad to hear that, Mike. No, that's marvelous. Yes, yeah. you, you've been bitten by the truth. Yes, yes, yes. infected for sure, and it's yes. it's it's um, it's become steady and stable in in a yeah. way that it, as you say so often, um, it's a nonverbal experience. That's you know? right, and, and so it's hard to put words to it, but. Hey, it's a podcast, so we'll try to do our best to put words. Yes, but the thing is that the experience is so immediately accessible and obvious. It is not obscure. You look for your face. Instead of your face, what do you see? I see the world. That is paying attention to your own point of view of what it's like to be you. Now, everyone gets that. Now, obviously, people respond differently, and you have to value it in order to continue with it. But that's different from whether or not someone gets it. Everyone gets it. And so I think that once you recognize that and uh, recognize that the other person has got it too, because how can they not, right? I mean, they can't see, you can't see your own face now. So we're not in a discussion about, has he got it? Have I got it? Have we, you know, that, it just doesn't cross my mind. It is, well, we've all got it now. Uh, it is so accessible. You know, how, how is it going down for you? That's the interesting bit, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And so that's it's a delight to, to meet you and, and to find out that you are uh, infected by it, so to speak, and are enjoying it. Uh, in your life, and that uh, is just wonderful to hear. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, and and you said it all already. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Any of the the very few regular listeners to the podcast, the headless way comes up every single episode. So oh. um, we can, of course, go into the story, you know, of how you met Douglas and a little bit of background. And I definitely would love to get a, some pointing out instructions. But just so you know. The, the listener base, no one's finding out about the Headless Way for the first time. <laughs> That's a regular. Well, listener. you know, that really warms my heart because I've been in this business for a long time. And when I first got into it, hardly anyone knew about it. And of course, with, uh, with time and with communications uh, developing, things change. But to hear that your uh, listeners are familiar with this, uh, again, that warms my heart. Uh, my uh, passion is to share this. And I, we, we redid the strap line for the website recently. And, and it's something like now, we believe that uh, direct access to your true nature is a human right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it is really, isn't it? Everyone really should have access to it. What they do with it is another matter. But that's my role, is to share this as widely as possible. And to say to your listeners, you know, look for your head now, look for your face, what are you looking out of? That's it. And here we are uh, celebrating that indivisible consciousness. You know, I mean, that is just far out and wild, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, so we, we, you start with sharing it. You don't start with trying to work out what it is and trying to understand it and, you know, what do you have to do for 20 years to, you know, we're in another uh, phase now. It is accessible. Uh, you, can ha you can see it immediately. Uh, of course, you've got to live it, but that's the adventure. That's, that's the challenge. And uh, we thrive on challenges, don't we? I think we do. Yeah. Yeah, and I just can't, you mentioned the website. I, I can't express enough how honorable, I, 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 the words escape me. You've done so much. I mean, if, if anyone does get infected, you know, they hear about the Headless Way, they get a little, come across a YouTube video or the Waking Up Sam's app or however they stumble upon it. 
it's all there for free. You go to the website, every single exercise, the app. I just found the app this week. I don't know how I missed the app all this time, but there's the Headless Way app. It's great. It's got, it's all in one app. It, there, the, every, every single source of you could possibly want to get it from, you can get it from. And I go, I'm like, how long of a, like the, the, the amount of, I'm sure you don't look at it this way, but the amount of man hours and effort and, and woman hours and all, all that went into creating this program that is the website and everything that comes off of that is just astounding to me. And I see it, it could only be a labor of love. It could only be a great passion for oh, something. Yeah. yeah. It is a labor of love, uh, but it's been a labor of love from the beginning with with Douglas Harding because Douglas gave and gave, and he wasn't in it for the money, you know, he did yeah. it for free, and I, I never paid him a, a penny, you know, uh, wow. and uh, we have, uh, what he, you see, he set the tone, which was that you've got this, there's no hierarchy, you can't get it more or less, you can't get it more uh, you know more of it or you know you've got it immediately your true nature is is there there it is in full 100 percent now and uh so when you get that uh you realize there's no hierarchy and uh you douglas didn't charge for it i mean you, you might have to pay for a workshop if he was traveling to cover expenses but exactly. it wasn't a business thing and it wasn't a, a church it wasn't an organization in that way with him at the top it was friends yeah. and he was very uh strong on this that it, there's not a student disciple it's friends and uh, it's a relationship of equality because you can't be more or less who you really are. And that set the tone and that is still the tone. And so, for example, the website, which you mentioned, I did all the content, but a couple of friends in Australia, Sam and Mary Blight, have done for free all the uh, design and uh, all of that side of it because they want to contribute because it has made such a difference in their lives. And we have people uh, translating many of the books as uh, volunteers uh, to give back because we love, we love giving it away for free. <laughs> it, is, it is such a, a kind of radically different thing to do, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, let, let's just yeah. give it away. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But of course, that's the nature of it, you see. Uh, it is uh, it, it, it is your birthright, right? No one can give it to you or sell it to you. And, and Douglas developed these experiments, you see, in the late 60s and 70s, which are a major breakthrough. And uh, they're a breakthrough because it's not about hierarchy and it's not even about primarily understanding. It is nonverbal pointing yeah, back. Yeah to you know, literally point your finger back at where others see your face. And there it is. Now, uh, this is, uh, has never been so available in the whole history of the species. I think that's true. So uh, I, I think, say, yes, it's I only, say, people are only just beginning to realize what, what is around. I think so. I, I, the word that always comes to mind is assess, accessible. Mm. It, it, it's five seconds. Look, mm. So I'll give you an example. I didn't plan on doing this, but today I had a friend at work. Um, he grew up Jehovah's Witness, uh, doesn't even know what Zen Buddhism is, never heard of Ramana Maharshi, nothing. Obviously, he's never heard of Headless Way, but he knows what podcasts are. You know, has, I have a podcast, and he goes, well, who's your guest today? And I gave him a very brief, you know, from an outsider's point of view. It was Richard Lang. He was a friend of Douglas Harding. Um, and he developed this thing called the Headless Way, which basically is um, see objects in the world, right? And then look for the head that mm. you assume is looking at all the objects. And he did it. And the look, it was nonverbal. The look on his face, he looked like a baby, like a baby seeing a, you know, a tree for the first time or, you know, a rainbow. And, and he was silent for about 10 seconds. And then he goes that's trippy, <laughs> you know, and I go, yeah, man, he goes, he goes, I don't, I don't get it, but I get it, and, yes, I and I said, I said, well, there you go, man, you're initiated now, there's no going back, yes, <laughs> yes. 
Now, that, well, that is wonderful. I mean, there are several things there. Uh, that one of the the greatest joys, really, is to share this, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, and Douglas, I got that from Douglas, really. I got a lot from Douglas. But uh, he, the, when you share it like that, it inspires you, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, just, you can't share it without it coming back to you. It's a, it's a exchange there. And uh, there's nothing. I mean, it, I, 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 I wonder about other spiritual, spiritual teachers, quote unquote. And I think, do you get the same as we, as we do? <laughs> and not just me. I mean, there you are. You've just, do you get the same kind of contact mm -hmm. blast when you share your way with someone? Well, I, I, I haven't heard of it in like, like this. I mean, 10 seconds and there you go. And the guy is glowing. Yeah. No, now, of course, he's got to live from it, but, you know, uh, that is a good start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and what I hear so much, I've been binge listening to in, your interviews, um, which you have so much um, incredible interviews on your, your YouTube channel with um, your friends that share in seeing in the headless way. Um, yes. and, and what I get from you again and again that I very much feel a kinship with and, and, and similar to why I do this podcast and the things that I do is... Um, like you were talking about the non hierarchy that it's not i'm a teacher giving you this te this teaching it's where there's a mutual seeing yes each other, meeting each other and and seeing myself in you like and now you yes. yes yes that's right and there's only one consciousness here that you experience isn't there of course <laughs> and it doesn't have your name on it or mike's name or richard's name and uh, now, how wild is that? That that is far out. Radical, <laughs> but yeah, really, and, and natural also, uh, and you know, trip it yet not absolutely down to earth. Yeah, like and, actually the most logical explanation possible. I know, and one of my motives for interviewing all my friends was to show how people respond differently, and everyone's got it, uh, and to demythologize this thing that only a few people get it or it's terribly difficult to get it's not <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's incredibly simple and and it can live through your life and create so much peace and serenity and connection and um yeah, yeah. so i'm just i can't i can't give enough praise i've just totally been uh no but really yes you see and uh, this this itself this whole approach came up out of the great mystery of your true nature. You know, it, it, it's, it is a natural development from our true nature. It's as if our true nature is, uh, is saying, okay, we're now ready. You know, it's now time to, to make this a lot more available. You know, if you study history, it was one or two people here and there who talked about it, who sometimes got killed for it. It has not been a very popular, common thing. But there's no reason why it shouldn't be. And uh, the human species has come a long way. And, and over the millennia, it's, it's taken on uh, its head. You know, you've t we've become self-conscious. We've separated from the animals and the trees, you know, and unlike the animals. And we've become, we're able to see ourselves from outside. Well, that, that started at some point. And it was only one or two, you know, who were doing it, but it worked. And that's why it, uh, people took it on, because it works better if you can understand how you look to others and where you stand in space and time and all of that. Well, now we're at a point where uh, we, we are uh, under pressure from only identifying with what we look like, confronting each other face to face. Well, uh, now it's time to take a fresh look, isn't it? At a very deep level and a very simple level says, well, am I what I look like? <laughs> you know, it's terribly simple. And now it is spreading and there's no reason why it shouldn't become the norm. And it should become the norm because it's true. You know, this is not a technique. It, it's not a church. It's not a sect. It is everybody's true nature. And uh, anyway, it's great to have a job to do, you know, something radical to share and something with so many benefits to it. You know, the face to no face, you, you, you know, I mean, 
No one has ever been face to face. No yes. one. Yes. We've always looked from the nothingness into the face of the other. And you, you, when you're conscious of that, you really see the other in a very respectful way. You are the other. You know, you're, you're built, built open for the other. This is the ground of respect and uh, uh, care and love, in fact, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and how could you not want the best for the face that is appearing in your consciousness? You know, I, I, this face isn't, but these faces I are. Know. Yeah. I know, I know. And, and now you've got, well, I can see three faces on the screen, you know, Nick, Mike, and Richard. And so I, and I have no face here, but three faces there, which is rather wild. <laughs> I, want to, I want to show you my favorite yeah. face to do face to no face with. Ah. Can you see that? It's not going oh. to translate to the podcast. Ram, but Ramana Mahachi. Yeah. Ah, yes. <laughs> so one of my favorite is to sit here and, I don't know, ah. something about those eyes just... <laughs> uh. But yes, I, I understand. He's inspiring. He he he, uh, he was a very inspiring man. Yes, but what he what is inspiring about him? Well, it's the fact that he actually woke up to who he was and uh, lived it. You know. Well, now that is for all of us uh, uh, the uh, an option. It really is. It and uh, uh, it is it is very encouraging and very optimistic. Really, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, when, so when you were talking about, um, it, it reminded me of uh, Douglas does a lot of when, when you're first born, obviously you have no face, obviously you're space mm -hmm. for the world, and then you start to develop a, a face, a head, right? And between the help of your parents, those around you, and it's, it's a survival mechanism, right? And then you become, a, or a, a getting through the world, <laughs> you know, it's a mechanism to be able to relate and to, you know, yes. get by. Um, and then hopefully, you know, as an adult, you're, you're completely uh, convinced you have a head and you're separate from, you know, there's you here with a head and then the rest of the world, and the rest of the, a lot of the rest of the world is out to get you in one way or another. Right. And it's a, kind of a scary place. And, and then I think it's, is it the fourth stage is, maybe you stumble upon the realization, actually, you don't have a head, right? Yes. And, and some and, peace can come from that. Um, well, that, I would, that's you know. right, yes. Well, I, I, th I think the thing is that you're not then going back to the baby. Uh, you, you're going on to the, the seer. And uh, you see, you've never, ever seen your head. And when, uh, as a baby, you're not aware of, of your appearance. Growing up, you, you take the face from the mirror and people tell you, and you, you imagine it here. And that you have to do in order to understand how to function. That's what you were saying. You, you, it's the price of joining the human club. Uh, and along with uh, that goes your name and age and job and everything like that. Uh, but then we get uh, kind of caught up in that, don't we? And we believe the hallucination, <laughs> you know. Imaginary. So I, yes. Uh, uh, so this is waking up to what you are from your point of view. But this doesn't now mean that I forget about Richard or I don't identify with Richard. I, I identify profoundly with Richard and I always will. Uh, but he's there and not here. You know, he's on the screen, he's in you, he's, he's, he's all around, but he's not central. And th this is the, the, the wonderful thing. Uh, you're not trying to get rid of your human identity. I'm not. I'm just trying to, just placing it where it is, seeing it where it is. Yes. And that is very compassionate towards yourself uh, and therefore towards others, actually. Yeah. It's kind of the only real self-compassion or self-love is... To, to like you said, play, you've said it so many times beautifully, placing it in its right place. It's, yeah. You're not the center of the universe, but yeah. you, you know, the universe is in you, right? Location, it's, location, location. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I, I like the idea of, of the personal journey in that way. And I, I was thinking of that as you were doing the parallel to humanity, saying, you know, of, at, way back when, you know, I don't know. 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens first started popping up. I'm sure none of them really c considered themselves having a head. And then, like you said, a few took on having a head 
and it gave them survival evolutionary advantages, you know? Yeah. So cool yeah. you said that because something I say with my friends a lot is we need evolution 2.0. Evolution 1.0 has made us incredibly good at survival and dominating nature and our environment, and it's gotten us really, really far. It did a great job. But it ultimately leads to its own self-destruction because as long as we have heads that we are separate from all the other heads that we need to protect and down the line – we're going to destroy the environment, we're going to destroy each other, right? And so uh, I, I always frame it as evolution 2.0. Well, I think one of the great opportunities is something as accessible, as non-hierarchical, non-religious, non-structural as this. You look for your head, and, yeah. and when you see that it's space for the world, and you are that space for the world, why would you pollute it? Why would you damage it? Why would, why would you not care for this as, as if it were yourself, right? And I think yeah. that's a great promising development. I, I, I like to say um, I have a, like, nostalgic feeling for today, like, as if I was 20, 30 years from now, and I can see all the, like, CNN documentaries of uh, Douglas Harding, yourself, Sam Harris, a lot of the cool Zilk Chen sort of, you know, people that are have followings but are, are kind of slowly coming up, that this was sort of like the beginning of a movement, I hope. You know, I have a very optimistic feel for that. Uh, kind of like, okay, we're here in Hate Nashbury, right? We, we look back on this time of psychedelics and, and the summer of love and all that, and a lot of amazing things and evolutionary things came from that, some not so good, but a lot of really good stuff. I like to imagine to project a story in the future of this is a small idea, kind of the meditation. Um, I really love Sam stuff so much. I do his meditation app every day. I do your little piece. I've done it multiple times, the headless way pointing out. And I, I really hope that can sort of spread that truth can spread and infect the culture in, in a way yes. that it could kind of reach a critical mass. Um, well, yes, uh, uh, obviously I agree with you. And and the power, you see, of it isn't that it's uh, uh, somebody who is charismatic or even that it's uh, a sort of, I was going to say idea, but it's not a, a, a sect. It's the truth. Yeah. You know, it's the truth. And it's the truth that sets us free. And it's the truth that people will take on if it were, you know, because the truth works better than a lie. And the lie is that you and I are face to face now. Yeah. It's, and we might as well call it out for what it is. It's a lie. It, we're, we're face to face for others. You see, we accept that and we function with that awareness. But my direct experience is when I look at you, it's face to no face and I'm open for you and there's no distance and I am you. And uh, it, we, the, the confrontation head to head it is, uh, is a lie. It, it, it's a, a dream. It's a hallucination. And all, all I'm doing is, is saying, let, let's wake up to, to the truth, you know, particularly in our relationships. Uh, you know, I, I, if I'm telling a lie about our relationship, that is not a good start. But if I start with the truth, you know, even if I find it difficult, uh, you know, uh, and this is not a recipe for an easy life, but it, it's a, a recipe for a, a life based on truth and depth that is true. So uh, I, I, uh, I think that the the, the the myth or the lie of confrontation has worked pretty good for a million years or whatever it is, but its time is up and we're, and we're, you know, why not stand up and say, you know, it's a lie. It's, been, it's worked quite well, you know, but we're, we're in, you know, our trouble, our trouble is confrontation, yeah. you know, with each other, with animals, with the environment, uh, now it's a uh, let's pay attention and and get back to seeing what is actually the case and function from that. And you see, uh, it is getting around. Yeah. You see, I mean, the fact that we're having this conversation uh, shows that. 
And the fact you said your listeners are, you know, have got some kind of awareness of this. Well, if, well, the, the truth is getting out. And uh, I, I think that it is very encouraging. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and really, what can one do but trust the truth and trust who one really is? You know, it's coming up with this conversation itself, isn't it? Who's yeah. talking yeah. here? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's something, uh, when you hear the truth, you know it, right? And, and it's so refreshing. Getting into the, I've gone into the world. Well, I'm going to jump in there, right? Because I, 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 it's just language, but when you see the truth, you see. Yes. It's yes. not even about understanding, is it? You know, if, if so, someone says, oh, I, don't, I, I can't see my head, but I don't get it. I say, yeah, you do see it. So I say you've got it, but you just, you know, it means something different to you than it does to me. And that's fine. But don't tell me you haven't got it. <laughs> I won't accept that. <laughs> I know you can't see your head. I'm convinced right. of that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, really. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to ask for a quick little detour. Um, hopefully I do end up getting this up on YouTube. Can we do a few pointing out? Just, uh, yes. yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. I'll let you know right now, my favorite all time is the pointing and spinning. That's just, I, 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 I'm so high after that, I feel like I could float away. Like, it's the coolest thing. We're not going to do that because we don't quite have the room to spin. But uh, I just wanted to share that. That's my all time favorite of the exercises. Yes. Well, I, you know, this is directing your attention to what it's like to be you. And not primarily trying to understand it, but just do an experiment to look. And all you have to do is uh, to point out first, is out and in. And you point out so the viewer or the listener can you get their index finger and point at something in front. And you're pointing out and you see a thing there. It's got color and shape and texture and so on. Yeah. And then if you, let's say you point at your, your arm or your other arm or your torso, you can see a thing there. You're still sort of pointing out. Now, hold your finger out in front of you and point back at where others see your face. This is the inward direction. And I don't see my face here. I don't see any colors or shapes or movement or name or age or anything. Now, this is just a nonverbal experience. All you see is your finger. You don't see your face at the same time. And uh, that's that's... That's it. It's as simple as that. And of course, you could point with the other hand out again, and that indicates the view out and the view in. Uh, there's no dividing line. You know, this space. And so the other, I mean, they're, they're children's things, really, because they're so simple. You hold your hands out like this in front of you, you see, and then you bring them back to the place you're looking out of, and they get bigger and bigger, and then they disappear hmm. into the great void. And then you bring them out of the great void. You see, yeah. or you notice how many eyes, these are visual, but there are non-visual ones too. But how many eyes are you looking out of? Well, you can see, I, I can see on the screen, I've got two. But if I do this, you see, and, and put the, you know, hold my glasses out and put my glasses on, the two become one. There's only one opening, single eye. And uh, th this is uh, non-verbal. It does not have to be a wow. You don't, you don't have to understand anything. You're just looking to see, you see. And, uh, well, that's a start, isn't it? And uh, the mo most practical one, as I mentioned, is if you look at somebody or even yourself in the mirror. Um, but I'm looking at you, uh, Mike, now, uh, or Nick, or both of you. I'm a bit confused now. All right, I'll look at Nick. I'm Nick and Mike. But I know, you yes. You could go for both. <laughs> No, I'm looking. I'm looking at Nick, and I'm just noticing. I see Nick's face, not mine, uh, and it's face to no face. Well, you see, I have your face instead of my own. I'm built open for you. See, I'm empty for you. Now that is a very deep thing. That's Namaste, isn't it? I. I. This is very, very. Now this is a most wonderful. A practical thing because you know whenever you're around people get into the habit of being face to no face consciously you don't have to say anything you don't have to feel anything 
Now, this is true. And I think, you see, as you go on attending to it, it just goes deeper and deeper in your life, you know, in, in kind of spirals. But it, this is a very, this is true. And this is what we all need, really. Yeah. 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 I, I, so, so much, as you're going through, there's so much beautiful things came up. Uh, let's see, which way are we going to go? One, I'll say, so every podcast, uh, Headless Way gets a mention, and then uh, my friend, Paul Hederman, gets a mention, <laughs> as you know, as you were logging on earlier, he said, what, who's Paul? Or I guess you have heard of him, but you guys haven't met. Um, yeah. So one of the, th I see, I can't help because I, I know the message that comes from Paul so well, I can't help but see so many parallels in other teachings. And honestly, the, the, par the one I see the most parallels with is the headless way, seeing. I, I just can't help but see so many ways, different poetry pointing to the same truth. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things Paul says a lot is uh, interest and attention is kind of a force that is going to either be directed to like you, your imaginary head and you being the center of the universe. And that's going to be really heavy and hard for the body to have to feel like it's the center of the universe, right? And one yeah. of the things that, that can happen is that interest and attention can disperse. And, and he says this beautiful thing is you're now available to what's happening in this well, moment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yes. one of, like you were saying, practicing face to no face with someone, like you said, most of the time they're, they don't know what you're doing, but you know, you, you're doing this practice. What one of the, I translate that into Paul's message as I can become very available to, you know, where they're at, how I can be of service, you know, uh, how we can be more of a team instead of this being an adversary thing, especially doing face to no face with someone you don't quite get along with that well. Yeah. It's a great remedy for getting around all the personal stuff and getting yeah. to what's the right next best thing for us. Well, you know? well said. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. And the other thing I was going to say, because you said um, that it's kind of like child, you said this is sort of like a child thing. I have, uh, I have five kids, um, but the two, the two that are into the headless way the most are my two younger ones, the <laughs> six-year-old and the three-year-old. Oh. And all the time I, I'll, we play with each other, I say to Amina, my six-year-old, uh, Amina, can you see your head? And she'll go like this. It doesn't translate to the podcast, but she'll look up for her forehead and she'll go, I can't see it. I can't see it, Papa. And it's just a very fun, you know. <laughs> it's beautiful. Game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then she'll sometimes, it, jokingly, because we kind of, you know, we're not we're not British. We're American, so we're a little more <laughs> rough with each other. Uh, I'll say something, and she'll go, Papa, you don't even have a head. <laughs> uh, it'll <laughs> come back to haunt you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Like, uh, Tell her to do something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, Amina, you need to put your toys away. She's like, what are you talking about? You don't even have a head. <laughs> you don't have any credibility. <laughs> so, yeah, I, it's, it's fun. It's infecting even the next generation, you know. Yes, yes. Yes, well, it's very infectious and uh, very refreshing to share it, isn't it? Uh, you know, it, it brings it onto the front burner and it is completely natural. Uh, but somehow the sharing of it brings it into sharp relief or uh, something like that. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm hearing Richard speaking. I'm hear the, hearing this voice in the, in the silence, in the one consciousness and thoughts and feelings and sensations and you in this one consciousness and we are sharing it very naturally uh, now th this is uh, yeah this is a, a lovely thing to share yeah it is and I, I actually did a podcast with a friend last night um, in person uh, in his backyard and one of the things that I came to towards the end is I'm fortunate to not have too many addictions um, in this life. Caffeine, I'm a coffee every day <laughs> addict, but not to drugs or alcohol. Um, but I definitely more and more am finding I'm addicted to love. I'm a love junkie. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm getting off <laughs> on any of these exchanges because it's, 
ultimately it's see, or seeing a reflection of who we truly are and, and that connection. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I personally can be incredibly introverted, but I, I, I wonder how much of that is self-sabotage because every time I come and see a friend, I meet somebody new, I go, oh, this is the good stuff. This is, you know, if there is any reason we're here, it's to connect and it's to see that there, like you said, I'm hearing Nick's voice as it's speaking simultaneously as it's all happening in this one consciousness. So if love kind of is one way of seeing that, remembering that, then that may be, that may be my worst addiction or my greatest addiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, God is love, they say. I mean, I'm not sure if one's true nature is introvert or extrovert, perhaps both, you know. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Simultaneous. Uh, yes. But, uh, Yes, I mean, what, what is love? Well, I don't really know, but the basis surely is seeing that you're built open for the other. That uh, a rather nice phrase Douglas used to use was you, you disappear in favor of. You vanish, you disappear in favor of the other. So I, I'm empty here, I'm gone, I'm gone. And you're present, you know. Now, th that must be the basis of love, you know. That, that is, em you're emptied out for the other. You make way for the other. They, be they appear in you uh, now. A and it, without you uh, having any designs, how can nothing, no the nothingness, have any designs? It, it is uh, empty for. Yes. This is, you see, I think you've got the key. This is the key. And it, it's now to, to keep turning that key and uh, opening that door again and again and again in, in every new situation and seeing what it comes up with. We don't know. It's not a, a program. It's an adventure. Mm -hmm. And like this conversation now is, is coming out of the, the mystery and is unfolding. And we're, we're sort of you know, enjoying the ride, I suppose. <laughs> I definitely am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another thing, as a, a kinship, I I hear when you talk about um, two things: uh, what Douglas's home and what the community that he sort of uh, made available. I remember hearing you say that everyone always knew your group because you guys laughed a lot. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. Right. I feel so that's our our little group Paul Hederman we meet for coffee after little songs or meet for dinner and same thing we basically spend half the time laughing you know about yeah. inside inside ridiculous jokes and stuff and I, I don't hear of too many other quote spiritual communities doing that right and so I go okay there's definitely something going right there that you guys are spending most of your time laughing <laughs> Well, there is a very amusing side to it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 You can, it's laughing at yourself ultimately, right? All of the ideas of um, being Well, separate. it's light. It, it is light-hearted. It light yeah. weight-wise and light in terms of like the sun. You know, it's, it, it, the heart of it is light. It's light-hearted. It's weightless. And so I, I, you know, on the one hand, it's very, very profound and deep and grounded and, and steady and stable. But uh, the other side of it is it's hilarious and it, it light, lighthearted. Yeah. Uh, and you, uh, we have uh, our meetings, a lot of meetings online, free, and, and people, anyone interested is welcome to drop in and they just have to contact me through the website to find out about the online zoom meetings but the people uh, love the fact that we've all got it that there's no hierarchy that there isn't a right way of doing it or a program to follow all of that you're home and uh, you're living in your own unique way from this eternal home. I mean, it's wild. It, it, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's your dream come true, really, isn't it? You've found, you found home, and home is this eternal awareness, immortal, you know, and, and not born, not dying. And in it is happening this incredible world, you know. I mean, you've got to say that is, that's an amazing achievement of who you really are, you know, to be and to, to be coming up with a universe you know i mean 
I, I anyway, uh, uh, I, I, yes, yes. Yeah. And you see, uh, the, the fact that uh, everyone has got it, you know, it now, so where's the, you know, that, that underneath it all is this one that you can see around the surface is this indivisible consciousness you know and it's self-evident and you can have confidence in it in a sense you know because it, it is visible in a certain way it, it, it's oh, it's reliable every oh, time totally. you yes. look there you see it it, it, it it's recognizable it, it's that's kind right of... yes and then uh, one's life has a kind of anchor and a base uh, uh, that you can trust and now it doesn't do what you want it to do but it, it you know life is a you know exploration of of living from this and, and trusting it more and more i would say but you know what i mean it, this is self-evidently real uh you know steady uh it, it, it it's not going to die you know now as you go on drinking from this fountain, uh, you know that that is going to affect you more and more deeply, isn't it? You, you know, the fact that you this doesn't die, you know, and, and Richard will die, and Nick will die, and Mike will die, and everyone, you know, planet will die, but you won't. Now you, you've got to you've got to say that that is worth knowing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. That's worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good selling point, don't you? <laughs> You're going to put your <laughs> in something. Why not? If yeah. It... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As that's you were saying that, it reminded me, and I'll, I don't know that all the listeners have done this. Uh, go to your website. Is it Douglas's wife? Was, was it Kathleen? Kathleen Harding? Kath Catherine? Catherine. Catherine Harding? Your, your, your talk with her that was, that's on YouTube, ah, I freaking okay. bawled. It, I cried. It was so ah, beautiful. Um, ah. When she got into, uh, I'm not going to do it justice, go watch the video, but she said something along the lines of, um, I miss Douglas, little Douglas. Oh, little yeah. Catherine misses little Douglas so much, but what he really is, is what I really am, is, is with me. I feel that it's with me, and I yeah. know it'll always be with me. And uh, I just, well, yes. yeah. <laughs> and, and you see, this isn't an automatic thing. This is something that you stumble into again and again, isn't it? Uh, you know, you, it's not, oh, yeah, no, who you really are. Yeah, no, I've done that. You know, it's not. It's <laughs> like it, it, you're, you're looking afresh now and it, uh, it, you know, potentially blows you away again. And, and that, that fact that this is one consciousness. I mean, how many consciousnesses do you actually experience? You know, what, what are you looking out of? It, it's no one's name on it, there's no boundary to it. Now that, that we, that, that, that's what we, it's not even really that we share it, because it, 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 it's, it's, it's deep, more indivisible, you know, totally. Now, you, you, you never get used to that. You know, it, it, you, you kind of stumble into it again and, you know, uh, it, it's a, a rediscovery and a rediscovery, isn't it? And that's what's so wonderful. You don't learn it. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, you can't get better at that, you know. It, yeah, it's, and it's only, it's only available, this reminds me somewhat again of Paul, but you guys point to it a lot too, that it's only available now. Yeah. It, it, it's only in this moment. Another great exercise is when looking at the clock, looking at yeah. time from no time is just beautiful <laughs> because yeah. um, time is the way that I see it. I'll see if you agree. Time is a mental thing. Actually, if you check in at any point, can you see or sense time? Time exists within the mind, within the mental movement. Actually, where we are here, space for the world, where is time? You know, it, it's, yeah. It, yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to. Uh, validate the reality of time. I like time, yeah. and I give it full credit out there. Uh, exactly. Yes, but here on the inward, you know, as you say, there's no time. Nothing moving here. Time and change go together, and Richard is moving. This 
into this conversation is changing. It's in time. I, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but here where I'm looking from is not in time. And I'm looking into time from the timeless. And uh, there's no dividing line, of course. But it is worth making that distinction. And then, of course, they come together. But I, I, once you see that your true nature is timeless, I think you're very happy with time. I am. And I love time. Uh, yeah, yeah, most, of course, yeah. Most yeah. of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. You know, we're, you know, 50 minutes into this. There's a, there's a great <laughs> song by Bob Dylan called Most of the Time. Do you know that one? I, you know what? It, I love uh, Bob Dylan, and I don't know. I was thinking the times they are changing. But no, it, in this, the, the basic theme is I never think of her. I never think of her lips. I never think of her eyes. <laughs> you know, I never think of her body. Most of the time. <laughs> so what I do, yeah, at the end of each verse is most of the time. You know. Do you know what album that is on? Most of the time? Because I, I know Bob know. pretty well, but he has a lot of albums and a lot of songs. So yeah, no, I, I don't miss I, that one. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Okay. Um, okay. But so, you see, all, most of the time, uh, you know, people say, well, how can I have this 24-7? Well, you know, it's a bit of a complicated question that because it's timeless, you know, and you can only have it now. But at the level of time, you could say, well, you know, just keep doing it and it will just become more natural. And probably you'll find that, the, you know, you stop worrying about it because you realize every time you look, you're home, you know. But I think that is a valid question. Uh, certainly, I get asked it a lot. Uh, you know, uh, how can I get, have this going all the time? And I think at one level you'll say, well, you know, you've got a job to do. Uh, every time you are with someone, uh, start to make it your business that privately you see your face to no face, you know. And when you're walking down the street, see you're still. And, you know, if you're driving, you're still and the scenery is moving. Or when you close your eyes, you've no boundaries and uh, the sound, you know. So it is very practical. The experiments are very practical. They're very hands on. You know, when you're listening to my voice, is it, are you hearing it with your, you know, ears or is it just happening in the silence? You know, all those experiments are actually ways of attending to it in your ordinary everyday life. So at one level, you say, well, you know, uh, you, you, you've got a challenge here. The other thing that's worth saying is how infectious it is. And uh, when you're a baby, you're headless, you see. Now, how do you get your head on? Well, of course, you're told, you know, that's the one in the mirror. You've got to put it on. You've got to reach in and pull it out and flip it around and put it on. And, you know, we're telling you what you look like and you've got to accept that. But basically, it's, it's a social thing. Everybody's doing it. So you, there's really no other alternative. And you want to join in. You know, it's got advantages. Who would want to remain headless? You know, as a, you wouldn't. You, so you join in. And you do it to others, you know, you, you tell them what they look like. So it is, the, the powerful thing is it's a social thing. Just like learning to talk, you know, you, 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 it's just, you pick it up as you go along. Now, it is the same with headlessness, you see. Well, if you surround yourself with people who are enjoying their true nature, you know, you'll just take it on without you realizing it, you know, like you did already, you took your appearance on. And so I say to people, if you really want to get this going, hang out with others, you know, and it's fun and it's enjoyable. And uh, it, it, so all of that, you know, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely attest to, I tried to start a meditation practice for 10 years, maybe, <laughs> and it would do two days in a row and take oh, a month. It's not, <laughs> this isn't sounding very promising. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and so this is a, this is the lazy man's guide to enlightenment. The only practice that uh, I, I joke with Mike and other people, the only spiritual practice I have is looking for my head because it, it is that accessible and easy. Yes. You know, there's, no special, there's no special meditation, you know, pillow you need. There's no special room. You can do it anywhere, anytime while driving, while uh, at home with your family and dinner at work, just look for your head. And so I needed something that easy to finally yes. be able to create yes. practice. And I think you're kind of hinting towards, and I can report. So I, I, I must have come across the headless way about three years ago. And the last year, we'll say or so, 
I don't think, oh, it's time to practice. I just, yeah. for my head, <laughs> like yeah. it, it, it's unconscious. It's just, yeah. it's like, man, I, I'm feeling heavy. Oh, there's a relief. Look for your head. Like, it's almost yeah. like the decision to do it doesn't even happen. <laughs> It's just like, oh. it's like the body has a natural habit of like, something's off. Oh, that's right. Look for your head. <laughs> you know? I know. Um, right? it, it's a bit like when you're growing up, you learn your name and you've got to remember your name. But after a while, you don't have to keep saying your name to. That's it. You know, it, you, you, you've got that. Thanks. And, and now it's the same with, with your true name, as they say, your, your true face. You know, you've got, you've got it. You're living from it. And, uh, you know, it's no big deal and it's a big deal. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm just reminded again and again, I, we're getting close to an hour. I don't want to take too much of your time. I see it's getting dark there. Um, <laughs> I'm not in a hurry. I don't okay, know. Okay, okay. It's, uh, it's, I'll, I'll it's, gradually fade into the darkness appropriately. <laughs> by, the, by the time their whole background disappears, we'll know it's time to go. <laughs> my true nature will be shining brightly, but exactly, you yeah. won't be able to see my appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the things, so in preparation for this, I listened to your your reading of um, Science of the First Person. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's, I, I think, I, I would, you're the expert. I, I would say from my own experience, if you start with the headless way, but the Science of the First Person is like such an incredible deep dive. It, it's one of those books that open up any page, read a paragraph, have you know, for no pun intended, have your mind blown, have your head blown, mm. <laughs> you know, it, every single sentence is so rich. And so, and, and all the, uh, the footnotes, the quotes that, you know, he put in there from all the greats, Ramana, Hoang Po, Suzuki, you know, it, it's just like, he presents yeah. no, just incredibly, good, yeah, oh, it's, it's amazing. Um, yes. And you so, see what he did there. I mean, he was just such a, radical thinker but he put it things so easy to understand but uh you know science normal science is the science of objects and what things are at various ranges you know yeah, and uh what he is saying well let's pay attention to the subject and this is as valid a point of view as the objective view of you you know what you look like through the camera at, you know 10 feet that's one view of you. You could do a closer one where your cells are further away, where you're the planet and you really are, you know. But what are you at zero, you see? Well, you're at zero, so have a look. And that's the science of the first person. And you're going to be different at zero from what you are at three meters. Now at zero, you are space for the world. You know, you're still and the world moves through you. You're face to no face. Your mind is not central. It's in the world. You know, your mind is at large. Now, this has so many implications in every area of one's life. That's the science of the first person. It puts on the map in scientific terms what we're doing here. So it's not a sort of something you have to believe or some esoteric kind of, you know, uh, belief. It is scientific. And you can, let's, let's, let's now apply the same scientific observation to what it's like to be oneself you know as well as you know from one's own point of view as well as what it's like to be oneself from six feet or whatever yeah and that's yeah. A, it's a it's a great book yeah so yeah. so much of that reminded me of and i don't know her work all that well but byron katie and oh, and, yeah. her, and her questions is that true that to me is beautiful first person science of like we we all i don't know me personally, can get lost in your mind of the million of scenarios of how, you know, every lion waiting around the corner is going to get you. And, and that, that to me is a very third person science kind of way of, well, this is possible. This is possible. Here, let me put a percentage on there of how possible it is that, you know, it's all going to fall apart. I'm going to lose my job, da, 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 da. But if from the first person science, from the subjective point of view, wait, is anything threatening me? Are all these ideas, how much truth or validity do these thoughts that are going through my mind really have? Uh, you, they don't normally deliver what they're promising. They promise <laughs> everything's going to fall apart. They promise, you know, you're going to be unlovable and all that. But they never really deliver on their promises. So th that is my little personal report. It's from the... the um, 
the science of the first person was it, it helped me to scientifically examine some of the turmoil <laughs> that can go on in the mental state or the, it, it created a whole lot of relief in that way. Um, yes, I understand. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And this, you see, the headless way isn't going to extremes. Uh, you know, the baby's headless and you don't know about your individual identity. The adult, you're identified with your appearance and you don't know about your true nature. Yeah. Uh, now, when you see who you are, you've got both. So you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You still take care of yourself. If there's a bus coming down the street, you don't say, I'm space for the world, I can't be harmed. You, don't, you walk, get out of the way. You know, uh, so uh, you take all the normal precautions, but you have this inner awareness now that you are safe. Yeah. You know, which doesn't mean you then play fast and loose with your life, you know, but it, it is a different ball game, isn't it? And it, it's reality. And, and uh, it is, yes, that kind of uh, realism and being in touch with reality and, and what is stable in your life, you. Yeah. 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 That's, that's one of the things I mentioned. I like the spinning uh, while pointing back to the no face because it, it's a beautiful metaphor for how chaotic the, <laughs> the world could become <laughs> spinning <laughs> hard to, you know, no sense of balance, but, but what uh, you're pointing to is st stable infinitely yes. stable and Still. you test that out you don't believe it you test yeah. it out you keep checking it out and real you know rediscovering it yeah i that i mean it's uh gosh it's it's so so therapeutic isn't it uh just to, to just at one level yeah yeah speaking of that so uh you you're a practicing therapist is that right well, actually, I'm more or less retired. I, I decided uh, I could, and I want to spend the rest of my days sharing, seeing, you know. And I, I really loved uh, uh, walking alongside people on their journeys, you know, from the open space, really. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm in my late 60s now, and time to devote my energies more fully to sharing uh, what I have to share here, yes. Yes, one of the things I thought when I heard you were a therapist, and I agree with Sam Harris on this one, I don't know, I'm sure you must have heard, he didn't say it in the interview, but when he put it out on his podcast before, he said, uh, uh, my next guest might have the most pleasant voice in the world. <laughs> 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 and I, got, I couldn't agree more. And I go, Richard Lang is a therapist. I want him as my therapist because I don't care. You don't have to go headless way, any of that stuff. Just something about your voice, it, it's just calming to the nervous system. And I'm sure it must have been for so many of your patients. Uh, oh, you're blushing. Uh, okay. <laughs> I might have gotten too personal there. but No, um, I don't mind. I, I don't mind. I, I, uh, yes. Yeah. 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 It w w so just, I know you don't do it anymore, but when you did do work with people on, on their journeys, um, did the headless way come into that or was it mostly trying to work on their story as a person? Well, I've done quite a lot of things in my life. I, you know, I, I, I ran Vipassana retreats for some years. I taught Tai Chi for 30 years. I taught five rhythm dance for 20 odd years. I love movement. And I was a psychotherapist for 30 years or what more. Oh my goodness. And why, one of the things I discovered was that if, if someone comes for Tai Chi or dance or therapy, that's what you need to give them and not the headless way unless they ask for it. Otherwise, uh, from their point of view, you're imposing your thing on them and that won't work. And so I learned to let go in those kinds of situations of what would come across as pushing my thing, which it would be in a way, uh, and just uh, lived it. Now, then you're coming from that space where you are the client, where you're totally on their side because you are them. So that obviously translates. And the basis of therapy or any kind of teaching is trust. 
uh, and you, you won't get them to trust you to, if you tell them to trust you. But if you are your true nature, uh, that is profoundly respectful and attentive. And, uh, you know, if someone asked about it, I would say, but, uh, and occasionally they have, and then they move on, you know, and you leave it. As you would in any situation, if I'm sharing seeing, if, if, the, if the person doesn't want to know, I, I let it go. I've no interest or business in them agreeing with me or something. You know. But when I'm doing a workshop or a situation like this, then I've been given full permission to share it. And then I don't hold back at all. You know. So it, it's what's appropriate, isn't it? But you never quite, it's not a rule. You know, I... I it's not that I never wouldn't, you know, I, I try and uh, live from the source and see what is appropriate, you know, and, and do my best in that way. Yeah. I think that's incredibly wise, man. What a, what a beautiful share and perspective. And I, as I was thinking, you basically said it, but if the job is to teach Tai Chi, I taught martial arts for five years. So oh, okay. not, not, similar but movement stuff, a little bit harder self-defense on the end of this spectrum but um if if the job is to do that you can do that face to no face you're, yes you're, you're transmitting a a a skill or a a technique or or something that will help the body in the realm of the body but the greatest service is it hey by the way look for your head while doing this they're gonna go what are you yeah. <laughs> you know what are you trying to slide in there and, and i think it's incredibly respectful to like you said when if that's the 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 skill that we're working on we're working on that that but the cool you know thing is at the same time you can be they can be they are the space that is your consciousness you're doing it head to no head and then you're again getting back to paul's example you're so much more available in that moment to to respond and to connect and to Yes, that's right. And and anyway, who is seeing who they are? You know, who is seeing who you are now? It, it's not Nick or Mike or Richard. It's the one seeing uh, seeing who it is. And, and there's no question of you know. I mean, what's that got to do with imposing anything? You, you know. Now, now that is a wonderful question, isn't it? Who is who is aware now of this interview? You know, whether it's me or you or the listener. Well, it's this one consciousness, you know, that, uh, this uh, being that has somehow magicked itself into being out of less than nothing. I mean, that is the miracle, you know, you are, you are, and you don't know how you are, as who you really are. You don't know how you came to be, you know, it, it, it's just, just that puts everything in perspective, you know, and it functions, really, you know, it functions, it functions. Yeah. Surprisingly well. Yeah. Miraculously well, most of the time. Now, it doesn't do what I personally want it to do. I keep discovering. <laughs> but it does what it wants to do, which is much wiser. And now that is something that one explores in one's life, isn't it? It's not like I have now achieved total surrender. I think surrender is, a, is something out there that is, that is in a, a dance with resistance. And, uh, uh, but the space itself is totally empty and surrendered. Your true nature, totally out of the way, disappearing in favor of the world. You know? and, yeah, one's, yeah. and this kind of dance with one's individual identity where one is exploring, trusting it, and you know, resisting that and trusting it, and resisting that and trusting it. Now that is an adventure and a half within the great void, isn't it? Yeah. And to talk to you and to meet you and to be sharing this one consciousness together with our different reactions, you know? Now that is what it's all about in a way, isn't it? At least it is in this moment. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah, I agree. And, and there's something so cool about allowing it to be a dance and not having to have one side of the coin or the other. No, I'm definitely Nick or Richard or Mike, you know, and, and, and all these things are happening to me. Or I'm definitely, there is no Nick. That's an imaginary. But allowing for the, like you said, the resistance and the, and the acceptance and, and the surrender, you know, and surrender being like, mm -hmm. uh, you, you shared in your interview with uh, the Buddha at the gas pump, Rick, Rick Archer. Rick Archer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you shared that when, when you get into creative, endeavors that um, yeah. 
it, you can get very fired up. And then it sounds to me, and I relate to this very much, that you can get into that dance of it becomes very easy and things flow. And then you start to try really hard and they kind of constrict. And then the answer is always like, just, just stop trying. <laughs> like, take a rest. Take a oh, bath. yeah. Like, I no. mean, it's, then, yeah, go ahead. it's the classic thing, isn't it? You know, you finally feel like you're flowing and you think you've cracked it. No, you've arrived and all those you know, poor people who haven't quite cracked it like I have. And the next moment you slip on a banana skin, you know, because that's... <laughs> <laughs> you talk about a good ride, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. And so that, that dance, yeah, is so much fun. And, and something like this is an exercise, again, in that dance of, of sharing... Well, you know, I, I didn't take any notes. I didn't prepare. No. Well, you see, I think that you, you know, you explore this. Creativity isn't something that you kind of go off and do. It's what is happening now. You know, yeah. my voice and your faces and the sensations and the thoughts are all coming out of nowhere. You know, what, what my voice is coming out of the silence and going back into it. Now that is pure creativity. You know, just looking at the trees outside the window, they're appearing in the void here. That... That's the void being creative, something coming out of nothing. Now, uh, that is your true nature. You're a fountain of, of creativity all the time. And, it, and it, one finds that if one uh, sort of you know, enjoys that, uh, then that, you know, affects w when you are being so-called creative or not. You know, it's not different. It is, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's your true nature it is just coming up with something all the time it's impressive one of the right. mantras which you really explained very well one of my mantras for fun i say god is always playing improvisational jazz just it's just coming up on the spot and then you could also say that this headless space is just it's improv it's jazz Yes. We don't have nothing's planned out <laughs> hey what about this hey what about that and you can feel when that sort of notice, you feel like a kid again. You're, you're, it's like, oh, there's every everything can surprise you. Even like you said, the tree or or a conversation amongst friends can become an incredibly surprising, magical thing. And that's oh, one of the things. Yes. Definitely jamming, not all. jamming, Impro jamming, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes. You follow that's the that, rip. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the that my listeners will know. I bring it up every time. Um, if, if this podcast is anything, I like to say it's a jazz duet. You know, I'm going to play something. No, I, I, I saw a, a program on Jerry Garcia, The Grateful Dead. There you go. And it's very funny because uh, it's called The Long Strange Trip. It's very interesting. He was a very kind of strange guy, actually, I thought. But anyway, uh, he used to... Uh, he was freedom without responsibility was my take on him. I would but agree. He, yeah. So now in his concerts, when he used to play, he'd always improvise. And, uh, you know, it didn't always come off, but he would always improvise. So every concert was different. So then he, uh, at some point, everyone started recording. They, you know, the audio recording, personal recorders got better. And, and you'd have banks of people recording his concerts. Now, the record company didn't like this. They thought, you know, this means no one's going to buy the records. But of course, Jerry Garcia couldn't say no because it was freedom. So they let it happen. And his thing was, you know, play every concert different and it's just gone with the wind. You know, it's, it's freedom. It's, uh, yeah. uh, now, the, the irony is that uh, his concerts are the most recorded ever because, <laughs> you know, everyone was different. So they all were recorded every one, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But, but, but I liked what his idea was that you just let it happen. You know, you, I mean, you develop your skills. He worked very, very hard to you know, honing his guitar skills. But then you you recognize that this this conversation now is unfolding, you know, and, and you, uh, there's something about that, isn't it? Like the, the sand paintings, you know, you just, oh. I was, just, I was just thinking of the sand paintings, the Tibetan oh. Buddha, and where they do the little different colored sand and, and it's very intricate and it takes hours <laughs> and they do it as a team. And then I just, it's funny, I just brought this up to my friend last night. As soon as the last piece of sand is there, they don't sit back and go, wow, look at that. The last piece of sand hits, they sweep it up instantly. 
<laughs> Isn't that such a beautiful practice to go? It's not about having, having, having recorded it on video now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then the question comes up: Why did we have to record this? We could have just done it for fun. But I always I, my favorite um, word for the podcast: it's an excuse, right? I could say, hey, Richard, you want to sit down and talk with me for an hour? And you probably would agree. But the fact that we rec record it and send it out there, hopefully. Some we, other we don't know. really know why we're doing it, do we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah, I, I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> and and I, I didn't plan it, you know, obviously, and you didn't, you know. So uh, this, is, this is natural, you see, uh, and you can still slip up, you know. I mean, it's not like anything's perfect. It's not. Only the void, your true nature is perfect. But this is, you know, the, we, in, you know, instinctively love this kind of play and this sharing and this communication and this recognition of our true nature together i mean it, it is just uh it, 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 we we it, i don't know you know it, i i recognize it somehow as something very uh beautiful tr tr truth beauty and goodness it's a, yeah i always say the really good stuff you can tell when you can't put words on it like, you know, it, no, no words suffice. <laughs> you know, that's always a good sign that it it, it is. The, this. The, only the void is like that, really. You know, yeah. it all. You know, it, it's very annoying. It's always right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> always. That's that's a Ramana quote I say all the time. Is the only truth is in the silence. As soon as you oh. go to speak about it, you obscure it. You know. And but here, here but we are. Except, speaking about except it. You do and you don't, you see. I, I, you see, I love it. that The fact, once you realize you've got it and you have got it, you can play a, and you don't have to sort of get legalistic. You know, what is the right way of saying this? You know, anger is arising. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mean you're, you're angry or what? You know, uh, you don't have to sort of uh, kind of yeah. pussyfoot about. You know, you just... Because you know you, you've got it, and then yeah. you can play. And that means you can accept someone else's different description yeah. and hope hope that they say it differently. And, of course, they will. Yeah. yeah. It, it, in jazz, there's no wrong notes. So if you say, I'm really pissed off, it's not a wrong note. It wasn't anger is arising. wasn't the right note in that case. <laughs> I remember can't saying get it something. Wrong. I remember saying something like that about Persian carpets, you know, that they always put one mistake in to oh, yeah. prove yep. that, that it's not, is not uh, perfect. You're not trying to compete with God. And my, my, someone said back to me, well, that was a good marketing ploy, wasn't it? You know, if anyone finds a mistake in this carpet, they say, oh, it's an intentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, perfection, not perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Right on. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I am well, do one of your well, a real delight to uh, sh share the space and let's do it again. And I consider you both friends, of course, and uh, uh, wonderful to share. And the listener, you're a friend too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and let me because uh, I'm I don't normally have people on that I need to say this. Uh, go to the website. What's the name of the website? Headless.org. O R G. And there you'll get links to our YouTube channel, and there's a lot on that. And if you are, uh, if you've done the experiments and feel drawn to it, you'll uh, find my email address somewhere there on the website, and just contact me, and I'll give you information about the Zoom meetings. We have seven or eight a week. We've got a community; they're free. We've got a community, and uh, anyone who has done the experiments and feels drawn to it is welcome. Yeah, Richard. Um... This honestly is like a dream come true for me. Thank you. I, I said yesterday, I said- It is a dream come true. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what else could it be? The void is dreaming. Yes. <laughs> what else could it be? I said to my friend last night, I said, if the, if the interview goes terrible, but at the end he says, I 